for today's extra content we have this dangerous monkey <laughs> just kidding uh, squish him <laughs> anyway I'll show you how to make this well not the whole thing but most of it it's the heatsink from an E3D hot end stay tuned Hey everyone, this is Kevin with Inventsmart, and today I'm going to show you the usefulness of a background image. And what that does is basically let you have the image in the background to kind of model something after. And first I'm going to show you how to add the model, or not the model, but the uh, background image. Over here on the uh, properties bar here of the object, you have something down here that says background image. You click on that, check it, and add image. It opens up another dialog box here. And you can open a file. And it adds the image into the background. But it doesn't show up unless you actually go into orthographic mode. Right now we're still in perspective, so if you hit 5, it still doesn't show up, but you have to be on a flat plane direct angle, so you either need to press 1 to get it in the front, 3 for the right side, or 7 for the top. So you can use it from all different angles. And what I have here is basically E3 or E3D hot end heat sink. And I actually already designed this and uploaded it to Thingiverse. It's on there if you want to find it under Inventomark. Anyway, the uh, the best way to use this I found is just keep the cursor centered, and if you know the size of something that you're going to be making, is just create a simple object of that size to start out with. So um, this is basically a cylinder. So you want to start out with Shift A to make a cylinder, and I'm going to change that to 64 because I 32 T volt I don't really like. So anyway, so the cylinder starts off at 2 by 2 by 2 and we want to make that 16 because that's the width right there so I'll change that to 16 by 16 by 16 and it's really big and you can't see the picture anymore press Z you can see it then but so what we need to do is make the picture bigger so we go back over here to the background image and you have these options down here the one right here on the bottom right increases the size of the image and the one over here moves it left and right and the one right next to it moves it up and down so we need to make it just a little bit bigger and it's too big you kinda have to play with it a little bit to get it just the right size It's a little bit too big. And after making the model once already, I know that this image doesn't fit exactly. It's a little bit off as far as the size goes. So we know this is 3.7. So let's make the height of the cylinder 3.7. And so I know that first part is that size. Now we can move the image down to kind of match that. It's pretty close, but it's not exact. And so we have that, we know it's 16 by 3.7, so that's a pretty close match there. You can mess with it a little bit to get it a little bit closer to what you want. But And then easiest ways to duplicate it bring it down and so this middle part doesn't say how wide that is exactly or does it <laughs> I 
I thought it did, but apparently it doesn't. Anyway, so, anyway, so we got the, uh, kind of the idea of the size, so we can get it pretty close to what it's supposed to be. Or to what it's, it is supposed to be. So we got that, duplicate this. We know that that one's supposed to be 3.0. Make that just three. Move that up. I can make this one a little bit bigger to match. And you can actually overlap it a little bit because you can use the boolean to add them together. Union. Apply. And you can delete that one. So we just have one object. Add modifier boolean. Union, add the next one, apply, so forth. And you can do that and just create the whole object that way. So if we go in object mode, we have it look, looks like that, basically. And that's basically how I created the heatsink that I uploaded to Thingiverse. What I didn't do originally was uh, get the correct diameter for the outer part. That's actually supposed to be 20. 2.3 I had it like 22.2 because .2 it wasn't exact because the picture here isn't exact but I'm going to show you the uh, one that I actually did make that's my 3D printer I'm working on I'll show you that a little bit here's the one that I did make there we go <laughs> okay so this one fits pretty close to everything on here as you can see, it doesn't quite line up to the picture exactly because it's a little bit off, but it's following the exact dimensions of 1 millimeter and 2.5. And to line everything and match it up, I actually zoomed all the way in as far as you could zoom and just match the lines up exactly. And to make the inset lines, I actually did a We'll do something a little bit different. Like with the cylinder, I'll just show you real quick a little kind of what I did. Oh, where'd it go? <laughs> way out of the way. What I did is basically just wind them up like that and went to face select mode, hold alt and right click, and then hold alt and shift and right click. You can basically select the individual lines there press extract size it makes them down but if you don't want them to scale on the Z you press the shift Z and it just sizes them to the different size basically kinda does a similar thing there and I just selected each individual thing and kinda tapered it to the actual image to get it the right size there. Then I made bolts and then I found the right thread pitch and everything and basically just modeled the whole entire thing there. And that's pretty much all I wanted to show you today is just the usage of the background image. You can use that for all kinds of different things. And with this, is this is just the uh, 3D printer I plan on building. Uh, I'm going to make a tutorial on how I build it from scratch, basically. This is the... I'm modeling it all first in Blender before I build it, so that way I know exactly what dimensions I'm going to need for everything. But it's basically going to... Each one of these is going to be 36 inch by 36 inch. That's 36 inch, and it's going to have to be 29 inches because that's as wide as the, my door is. <laughs> so got a pretty skinny door but that's the, all the bigger I can build it but I'm just going through and modeling each thing uh, just like it is in real life just exact dimensions and kind of doing a mock-up of it before I make it so I got I found a place where I can get 900 millimeter uh, lead screws with the little things here and got all the bearings and I plan on making it a dual extrusion 
somehow like that with a fan up here and kind of another fan up here just kind of going through the fans. So it's kind of like a blows both the air through and then kind of up and away from the print. I don't want it to blow any air on the print. I want it to move the air up and away just to get it away from it. Because I know with my current printer I had to build a little windscreen to make it so that air would not get on the prints at all because it would actually make it warp that way. It's kind of weird what you learn when you build something on your own without any directions or anything. You find out all about it. I'm gonna delete that. But then I made the. Uh, oh, let me zoom in on that. <laughs> made the uh, pulley, and I got the bearings, and then the uh, NEMA motors. I got it all lined up. I basically got everything where I want it to be. I'm just modeling these out. I haven't really finished them yet, but it's a work in progress. But it's going to be a dual axis with on top, so the head moves around all axis is up here, but the Z goes down for the whole thing. And that's the 3D printer. I just thought I'd show that a little bit. But for the uh, background image, I'm actually on the same Blender file. It's just a different layer. You can go between layers because this is this layer and layer. What did I make in there? I think this is where I made the bearing or something. Yeah. So what I like to do is if I'm working on a, a bigger project, I make different layers and just put different things in other layers. The only problem with that is you have all this up here and it's best to go through and name each object when you're working on something that has a lot of parts. Like up here, the uh, to name stuff, it's, this is the properties of the object and where you can change all kinds of different stuff. But this is where you can change the name. You can also change it up here. But I find it easier just to click on an object and name it there. But that's pretty much all I had for today. <laughs> Thanks for watching.